Okay, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to mate with a knight and a bishop against a king. Um, the first part, which I'm not going to show you for now, is pushing the king back against um, a wall. Um, that's the first thing you want to do, is get him up against one of the sides. Now, uh, this can prove tricky, um, and you're just going to have to play with the knight and bishop. You probably want to get out your, your uh, chess software. It um, doesn't really matter what. Just find a strong engine. Anything will do. And uh, practice coordinating your knight and your bishop and your king. Um, the key is your king mobility and keeping control of the center of the board, and uh, you'll be pushing him slowly backwards towards a wall. This is the position you're trying to get yourself into. Um, basically, to get him against the wall, you want your king to be two spaces a apart, and uh, your knight and bishop in this situation. It shouldn't be that hard for you to get maneuver your pieces in this way um, at once you get it going. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to play your bishop to h7. Um, you can see, obviously, none of these squares are available to the king, and you cut off this square with your bishop. So you force the king to move into the e8 square. Um, and next, what you're going to do is you're going to move your knight to e5. Um, this cuts off all three of these squares. The king cuts this one off, and the knight does, obviously. Um, he's got two options here. One is to come back to f8. One is to come back over to d8. And we're going to see how they turn into the same thing. Um, so we'll start with the f8 option. If he goes to f8, you're going to check him. He steps that way, which is the only move. You bring your king to protect your knight. Now he still can't come here, can't come anywhere else. So now he's out to d8 anyways, king to d6. And we basically just transposed into where we already were in our starting position. Only we're two spaces over, which is great. So he'll try to come out king e8, and uh, you can just check him. He's back. And then the same thing we're going to play. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to waste a tempo here. Um, and this is because we want the king to move this way. Um, and uh, so we're going to come back to that line because it, it just meets us back here. Um, so knight e5, bishop a7, king e8, knight e5, king d8. Um, you're going to play king e6 here. And now temporarily you're going to let the king get away from the border, start sneaking out this way, but you're going to see how beautifully the, the knight and the bishop work together to cut off his, his escape squares. He's going to play king to c7 and you're going to play knight to d7. Now you can see already that the knight blocks these two squares, but the king can slip out this diagonal, right? So he plays king c6, and you play bishop d3. Now you can see your knight blocks these two squares, and your bishop blocks a square here, your king blocks these, and you've got almost like a little like barrier here that the king can't cross through, and he has to come back in this direction. Now your ultimate goal in this, in this tactic is to push the king towards the color, or the corner whose color matches the square of your bishop. So I have a, a, a light squared bishop here, um, so I'm pushing the king towards that corner, and that's where I can mate him. I can't mate him in this corner. I can only mate him here. Um, so he's going to be trying to run away from that corner at any given point. Um, his best here is king c7. Um, but ultimately, either way he goes, you're going to be able to catch him in this corner. Um, whether he runs this way or runs this way, imagine turning the screen, flip it around sideways. Either way, you're pushing him towards this corner. Whether he goes here or here, he's every bit as close. Um, so bishop d3, king c7. Bishop e4. Now we're cutting off this square, so he has to keep going back that way. He's going to go back to king d8, trying to make it back out this direction. And obviously we won't let that happen. King d6, king e8, and again, this square is cut off. This is his only escape square, so we're going to check him there to cut off that square. He's back to king d8. And this is the position that we saw earlier. Um, what you're going to do here is waste the tempo, because you don't want you don't want the move. So you're going to play bishop f7. You're giving the king back the move so that he has to go to king c8 that's forced. And now we're going to do the same thing that we just did over here. We're going to hop the knight down and then over. So knight c5. Um, now he's going to play king d8, again, trying to stay away from this corner. And you're going to hop the knight back up this way. See, so we've made a, a pattern, like a W with our knight all the way down here. You see this um, starting in the original position. And uh, our knight has come here. And now here we are, knight c5, king d8, knight b7. Check. Um, again, this square is cut off. These are cut off. His only option is king c8. We're going to play king c6. And now he's forced again, king b8, and we're playing king b6. So now we've done the same thing. We've bumped him from here to here to here. Same position. King c8, and what do you do? That's right, you check him on bishop b6, cut off his only escape square, and he's back to king b8. Um, now here's tricky. What, which, what we have to do is we're going to keep this square covered so we can't run this way, and these squares are all covered by your king. So now you have a chance to move your knight away. Knight c5, and our goal here is to check him here. Uh, his only move is king a8, it's forced. And at this point, you play bishop, I'm sorry, you play bishop to d7 to waste the tempo. Um, we can't check him here. 
Uh, and we don't certainly don't want to stalemate him. It would be a horrible blunder to play right here and stalemate. You see the king can't go anywhere. Um, so we're going to waste a tempo um, with bishop d7. And this forces the king back to king b8. And his moves are all forced from this point. Knight a6 check. Again, everything is covered. His only move is king a8. And bishop c6 is checkmate. Um, so that's how it works. Um, so you're going to want to remember... Uh, the, the pattern that your knights take starting in this position here is, is what you're looking to get to and you want to keep wasting tempos with your bishop um, keep your king close and uh, remember this trick here to keep him from escaping and then we're just going to keep using that same sequence of moves to uh, push him towards the light squared corner if it's a dark squared bishop you're going to be checking in this corner or this corner either way works same tactics here waste the tempo remember check him, and checkmate. So I hope you enjoyed my video, and uh, I encourage you to play with this position. Um, now, a lot of people have a lot of criticism about even learning positions like this because they say, uh, you know, this is unrealistic that I'll ever end up with a bishop and a knight versus a lone king. Uh, when is that ever going to happen in real chess? Um, I like to think of the end game. Um, I, I always want to be prepared for any kind of end game I end up in. It would be a shame to assume that you know how to do this. And as you can see from this video, it's not an easy thing to do if you haven't studied it. And uh, it would be very, very easy to lose. Uh, or to draw, um, not be able to, to finish your opponent off. Uh, it'd be a shame to be in a tournament and uh, be stuck without this resource. Now, even a lot of grandmasters say, well, I've only seen this position two or three times over, over the board in thousands and thousands of games. And that may be true. Uh, but this, this has a lot of value for another reason. The primary reason, I think, is because it helps you learn how well your bishop and knight can coordinate attacks together, um, how they can cut off squares and, and, and really corral the enemy king or enemy pieces. Um, they really have a lot of control. And... Uh, a lot of beginners would, would gladly take a rook over a bishop and a knight pair, and uh, this is just folly. The bishop and the knight work so well together. Um, for a better example of, of how well the bishop and knight work together, you might want to look up Fisher's game, um, which, which is commonly known as the, the greatest game of all time, and uh, just look it up under that title, and uh, you'll see how well he moves his minor pieces. He ends up sacrificing his queen and a rook, I believe, and, uh, and then uses all of his minor pieces to, to corral the enemy king down and eventually mate him. It's a beautiful game. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial, and uh, I look forward to posting more for you sometime soon.